Why do I do this again? Because YouTube pays me. Well, actually, that's not why I do this. <laughs> Hi there. Well, welcome back again to my kitchen, everyone. Here it is once again, time for Cast Iron Wednesday. And actually, even though I said, well, here we go again, <laughs> um, I'm actually really glad when uh, people show up to watch these. I mean, these live these uh, live videos here are a lot of fun. I mean, they wouldn't be, if they weren't, I wouldn't keep doing them every week. And the reason why they're so fun is because folks like you uh, show up and you actually uh, take part and make snarky comments. And well, again, make this uh, a lot more enjoyable. So uh, above all else, I can only thank everybody for that. Um, but nonetheless, as we say every time, it is what we call Cast Iron Wednesday. And I didn't make up that name. That rather has become something of a YouTube tradition. A whole bunch of uh, YouTube channels, uh, usually the smaller cooking channels, which I really enjoy, uh, make a point of uh, doing a cast iron video on Wednesday. Hence, Cast Iron Wednesday. And again, it's, uh, it's really nice to see uh, people who uh, show up to these things regularly, like Papa Dan. Well, nice to see you this week. Um, yeah, hello, uh, Jamie. And hello, everybody. Greetings from North, uh, North Louisiana and Bookworm73 and Red Dog and JD Hive4. And Jessica T and William Hurd and Fluffy Otter. Oh, you, you folks here are, are regulars. And <laughs> again, I'm a little embarrassed that I have regulars on this channel. But it, it's as, as I said, it really makes this a lot more um, <laughs> a lot more enjoyable. <clears throat> but um, anyway, on to the cast iron because, well, I'm sure you saw the uh, d description of tonight's uh, you, uh, video and as well as pictures of a uh, modern Finex skillet and a vintage Erie skillet. Well, this kind of, uh, the idea kind of came to mind when I was uh, cooking those steaks uh, on Sunday for the uh, 10th anniversary of the cast iron cooking group because um, <clears throat> I, uh, had, I made a couple of steaks and they, t and they came out very good. I'm glad about that. And as I was cooking those steaks, I thought, you know, I always, uh, you know, there is uh, one pan that I seem to grab, especially for cooking steaks. And that would be the Finex cast iron skillet that I have been l lucky enough to own since 2014. And why that one? Well, because that one is probably the thickest and heaviest cast iron pan in my entire collection. Uh, yeah, I know there's always the 15-gallon uh, cauldron, but as far as skillets go, that's probably the uh, heaviest one. <clears throat> and my idea is that, you know, a thick, heavy pan is the best there is for searing steaks, and I prefer it even more than a uh, thin, vintage uh, cast iron pan. And the question is, why? I mean, what really is the advantage you have of a thick pan over a thin pan? I mean, there are reasons, of course, but they don't really have a lot to do with cast iron. I mean, when you're talk when you think of a thin pan, you know, you can think of what those featherweight um, aluminum and uh, stainless steel pans that ever that uh, you can use really to uh, take it, you know, to take your food and flip it and move it around and everything like that. But and most of all, those thin pans as well, you know, they really have no heat retention. They allow the heat to pass directly through to the food. And that, of course, is the whole point. But then again, that's just it. Cast iron is a very poor conductor of heat. What cast iron is really great at is heat retention. So the idea, of course, is that it uh, grabs the uh, food, grabs the heat, and it holds it there in the pan so that it stays hot and uh, will not cool off for a long time. And really, is that the same with a thin cast iron pan as well as a thicker one. I mean, after all, you know, with even with a thin cast iron pan, if the pan's going to stay hot for a long time, well, then uh, really there shouldn't be too much difference as far as uh, the thick versus thin. So I just uh, got the idea. Well, then let's uh, put some of these pans to the test. <laughs> so and hello again, uh, yeah, everybody, to John S. from Canada. Always, uh, again, always nice to see folks from our uh, neighbors up north. And Cast Iron Restore, who says, recently found a thin no-notch lodge. Very smooth, hmm, very cool indeed. Wow, I'm nice. Is, it, was it an ARC logo pan, or do, or what? did it have uh, no markings at all on it? Um, I don't have one 
73 was a good year for both of us for different reasons. <laughs> I don't have a no-notch lodge. I mean, I've got, I think, a nice collection, but I don't have everything. However, what I do have, let's uh, get, let's get uh, over and let's see uh, the stars of tonight's little cook, shall we? And what are we what are we going to be doing here? <clears throat> now, uh, the other thing people often say, of course, you know, is that uh, modern day cast iron is thick and heavy, and thin, and uh, vintage cast iron is thin and light. And that's not necessarily the case. That's why I've got a couple of specimens of each here. Uh, on one hand, we've got a modern day, as I mentioned, the uh, Finex cast iron skillet. This is the number 12, and this is indeed thick and heavy. Ugh. And this is my, ugh, currently my bad wrist, so i got to be careful here. Ugh. On the other hand, uh, also modern, uh, we've got the Lodge Blacklock skillet, which is, uh, notice, is much easier for me to, for me to lift with my uh, wrist here. So uh, this is the 10-inch uh, Blacklock, uh, which when I uh, did the unboxing on this, I weighed this, uh, out on a scale, and it weighed only about two ounces more than this vintage Griswold uh, Erie skillet. This one here uh, dates to about the year 1905 or so. It's a 10-inch, a number eight, that is. It's Erie, as you can see from the logo, made by Griswold before they started doing the Griswold logo. And this is indeed very light and thin. On the other hand, there was thick vintage cast iron as well, among which is um, probably one of my all-time favorite pins, which I've used many times. And that, of course, would be the Birmingham Stove and Range um, <clears throat> Red Mountain number eight here. So we've got uh, two modern day pans and we've got two uh, vintage pans. We also have two thick pans and two thin pans. Now, uh, I have been, um, are you, I, are we ever going to try cast iron on a barbecue side burner, a skillet, or perhaps your your wok? You can borrow mine. I have a full tank. <laughs> it's a tempting offer. I'll say that much. I mean, as you can see, the vast majority of my cooking, unfortunately, has been kitchen cooking. I have enjoyed uh, outdoor cooking, but it's not been something I've uh, been able to do on a regular basis. So, uh, Kevin Mass says, I prefer the thick ones. I bought a favorite and I hate it. Well, then I guess it's not your favorite. Um, that nice selection. Well, we, well, I do my best. Uh, how long were you here and where did you stay? Um, I guess you're talking about outdoor cooking then. <laughs> oh, you're sorry. You're talking to somebody else. My apologies. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with this, shall we? So um, as I said, my plan is to uh, give these a little bit of a heat retention test to see uh, what we can do. Now, I have been uh, actually heating these pans up so that they are roughly around the uh, same temperature, more or less here. This one here seems to be at about 350 degrees or, or less. Um, the uh, Fine X have also heated to about the same temperature. The Black Lock, um, actually, let me see. It looks like the Black Lock has, has uh, strangely cooled off a little bit, or may, more likely my burner isn't that great. Uh, and the Erie, on the other hand, I've also managed to uh, get to, well, let me do this right here. Yeah, I've also managed to get the Erie to uh, right around the same temperature as well. So based on all of this, here's my plan. I'm going to take each one of these, take it off the heat, and uh, try to and uh, use just the residual heat of the cast iron pan to uh, cook an omelet or four omelets, or at least I hope I will. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I mean, hopefully these things won't cool off uh, to the point where it will be uh, much more difficult to make an omelet. So let's see what happens. That means we get to uh, move our view around a little bit. <clears throat> Don't you just love the uh, this amateurish? Okay, there we go. Now from here, let's move this mic to some place where... I can uh, keep it out of the way, relatively speaking, and I should have planned that part in advance. My apologies there. Oh, I know what to do. Let's move the mic up here, shall we? How about that? What a concept. Because look at this. We got ourselves a boom mic now. 
Let me just move this cord out of the way a little bit. Yeah, next week I'm going to uh, do something about that. Um, how else can we do this? Let's move this over a little bit. Thank you, as always, for waiting this long. I think this, uh, this might work. Thank you for your patience. Let me try one thing that works. Move this up here. 